<laughs> Can you make my hair look like his? <laughs> I want my hair to look I, like I, yours. I, no, I want, I want, I want my hair to look like yours. You want a Sandy. I want the Pat Kiernan. Hi, I'm GQ's Mark Anthony Green. By day, I'm a writer for the magazine, and by night, when I'm not searching for exotic hand lotions and leather pants, I'm hanging out at our barbershop at Barclays Center, getting haircuts and talking with interesting people. Hopefully, they don't f up my hair too bad. Are there any uh, news people anchors in your family? No, just me. What made you want to do it? I don't know. I was interested in it from like six years old. I, I, a, I love the news, and B, I was always interested in broadcasting. You had to be a really cool kid loving the news at six, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you're messing with me, right? Yeah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Has there ever been a news story that was like your most difficult? Well, I mean, the two most difficult would be September 11th yeah. and, and Hurricane Sandy. Tens of thousands of people out of their houses, entire neighborhood burning down, crane dangling above 57th Street, right. half of Manhattan without power. I mean, any one of those things is a big story, and you had them all at the same time. A few of the editors and I that lived in Brooklyn, we had to walk to our office in Times Square. I did walk home once. Actually, I, I walked most of the way home and literally at the Williamsburg Bridge, and some guy saw that I was trying to hail a cab to get over the bridge, and he's like, hey, we're, we're going to the other side, jump in. I always like to hear about New Yorkers <laughs> being decent. You know, like, that's good. A lot of that happens in New York. We get a bad rap. New Yorkers are infamously tough on their sports teams. Yeah. Um, are they just as tough on their anchors? But people are very nice, like, like 99 out of 100 interactions with people. Because I ride the subway home every day, and more often than not, they'll end up having a conversation with them for five minutes. Always very favorable. Tell us about when you wake up and what time you have to be at work. I have to be at work at four. Let me speak on behalf of all GQ editors. If we had a 307 wake up time, <laughs> you guys would get one magazine a year. It would be Gentleman's Yearly. <laughs> You're like one of these guys that's on the subway at 9 or something? I'm one of those guys. I feel good about being on the subway at 9. I feel accomplished. Can I just say, though, I'd rather be wedged between two obese New Yorkers than have to get up at 3.30 every morning. All right, well, we all pick our path. We pick line. our battles. <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing about America, you know? What's the biggest difference between Canadians and Americans? I think it's true that Canadians are exceedingly polite. Yeah. Americans are more opinionated. So you're really big on social media. The kids would say your Twitter game is dope. Oh, that's Yo. good. Twitter is fantastic both for dissemination of news and for news gathering. Twitter's a big part of the way that news gets put out now. So you hear that, American people? It's not just all selfies and games and <laughs> hashtags. Great segue to my next question. Okay. Justin Bieber. I apologize on behalf of Canada. He seemed like a nice kid, and for the first little while, it was good. What if that was like the, the truth about Canadians? That they were all kind of like rock stars on the inside. Is there a Justin Bieber inside of you back then? No. <laughs> there is no. If you get a, mil no. a million Twitter followers, are you going to turn into Justin Bieber? We need to know. That's, that's right. If I got a million tw Twitter followers, I'll turn into total <laughs> No, but it's been a tough year for a Canadian, because between Rob Ford and Justin Bieber, it's, you know, the, the people are not being well represented. I understand the element of appeal of Rob Ford, which is that it's a politician who just does what he wants to do and really goes about his I am a man of the people, I'm a regular guy thing. But there's a line between that and crack. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying don't do crack, is that what uh, I'm that, Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, if there's one message I could send to the people of America today, yeah. it's don't do crack. <laughs> what are you doing later, Hansel? Oh, I'm busy. <laughs> I got another one after you. <laughs> Listen, I can't thank you enough for coming by. I think your haircut's better than mine. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Be good. Don't lie to the people. I, I, I got my own. <laughs> I'm all over it. Thank you. All right. All right. Let me know if you uh, need help with the news later, man. Yeah, we, no, we'll have you on sometime. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm camera Seriously, ready. Man. All right. Could everyone quiet down, please? Thank you. So that was me and Pat Kiernan, the coolest Canadian in New York City. If you liked it, click the little thumbs up weird icon thing. And for more of GQ Barbershop, subscribe to our channel. See you guys next time.